got going on here is we got a PLX wideband and it's supposed to have a zero to five volt out for your analog to like your HP tuners or something like that uh, for a wide band sensor. And it's also got the narrow band as well. So it's zero to one volt. And supposedly, supposedly you can run the signal wire for the zero to one volt narrow band to the factory ECU. And that way you can just use the bung and the exhaust pipe that you currently have right now where your O2's at, pull that O2 out, put the Y band in, and then you can send the signal from the PLX to the factory ECU. So now what we've got to do is right now I've got this unplugged. Here in a minute, we'll turn the car on. And whenever I turn the car on, I'll go through and figure out what is hot when it keys on and figure out what is ground. And that's what's going to power the unit as well. And then all we gotta do is, is find a diagram. I think I've already got a diagram, but we're gonna double check by checking all our wires here. And we're gonna hook it up. The only thing that throws me up, throws me off is, is on the factory setup, you've got two signal wires. You got a high and you got a low. And I've gotta figure that whole ordeal out and figure out which one I can tie into so we can get signal to the factory ECU. So we're gonna attempt this if it works then it's gonna be great for everybody that's got any car out there. All you gotta do is just get a pin out for your vehicle and this will work great on a C6. It shouldn't be too bad. Um, I, think, I think it'll benefit a lot of people by doing this. Also, what's cool about that PLX is it's got a Bluetooth dongle with it. Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Right here. You got yourself a Bluetooth dongle. It plugs into the PLX. By doing that, now you can get on your phone, rather than having a gauge in a car, because we really don't want no gauge pods in this particular car. We kind of want to keep it clean and keep it factory looking. So now you can actually Bluetooth the air fuel ratio and stuff like that to your phone, to a tablet or anything like that. And you can just set it in the dash um, by your phone holder and set it up on a vent or something like that. And you can monitor it that way. Uh, typically, once you get everything set, you really don't need to be looking at it anyways, uh, unless you're just overly protective of things and you just want to double check from time to time. There's nothing wrong with that. And then, uh, yeah, so we're going to work on getting this done. I'll figure out the pinout, and once we figure that out, I'll report back to you guys. So uh, hang tight. All right, I'm getting ready to put this PLX in. I had to get the plug in right here, which the dongle is already on. The gray wire was already uh, in the box, but it was not inserted. I inserted it for the zero to one volt for the narrow to the narrow band. And then I got a, uh, a blue wire here for zero to five volts for the wide band that will go to the HP tuners that will run inside the car. And then you got a plug like this, plugs in. Red is obviously power and black is obviously ground. We'll take that. And I'm gonna try to power that off of the factory O2 plug and then we should be good to go. I'm gonna double side tape this to the inside where we mounted the ECS stuff at uh, on the other video. It's gonna go right in there somewhere. If we can make it work. The plug came with those pins right there. All you gotta do is just put your little wire on it, crimp it up and then push it into the connector and it clips in, it clicks and that's when you know you got it all good. So I wanna get to busy on doing this, and then once we figure everything else out, I will report back. All right, so for this PLX, what we found out is from the factory harness is that the purple wire should be the signal wire going back to the ECU. We're gonna connect that to the gray wire that they sent us for the zero to one volt out, and hopefully the narrow band works. Crossing our fingers here. That I was talking about that we're gonna run to the HP tuners software inside the car. We've took we've taken the inner panel off here on the inner fender wheel on the driver's side front. And if you look right there, we're gonna get us a grommet, of course, and put right there. But we just went and drilled it. There's actually a punch out inside the car that's already got like it looks like there's supposed to be a hole going there, but there's not. And you can just kind of peel it back and just drill you a hole through it and that'll run inside and you'll be able to hide your wire wherever you want. So that way when you need it, all you gotta do is plug it in the HP tuners. 
All right, now we're getting ready to start the car up and everything and check it with HP tuners to see if everything's working. But first, I want to show everybody that we got everything tucked up out of the way. Uh, got our hob switch right here for the ECS booster pump. And we got everything nicely tucked away right over here. We got our wide band over there. We got our ECS booster pump over here. All the wires and everything are ran. As neat as we could get them. And like I said, we're getting ready to fire this thing up. We'll see if this works. He's got the PLX rolling on his phone. Bluetooth. Pretty neat. You'll see the Bluetooth out here blinking, I believe. Yeah, see it there. That's pretty badass. Hell yeah, everything's working good. All right guys, job's done. Everything's great. As you've seen, everything was working in HP tuners, the software, the cool, the cool idea from the dongle where you can Bluetooth to your phone is freaking awesome. You can check it in Lambda, AFR, you can check it in like gas scale, methanol scale, all kinds of different scales, which we like to keep things on Lambda, which is what, which is what we changed it over to. Um, another thing real quick, we was not able to power the PLX unit from the factory O2 sensor plug because uh, those wires coming off that kind of mess with the heaters and everything for the factory O2 sensor. And we didn't want to mess with none of that. So what we done was is just, we tapped the PLX into the fuel pump. The fuel pump is the, on the 2008 C6, is if you take the battery out back here, you'll see a blue connector. On that blue connector, you'll see a heavy gray wire. If you tap into that, that will power up the PLX only when it's started. It will not work if you just put it in an accessory. It's got to be started, obviously, because the fuel pump only runs for like 10 seconds and then it shuts off. So once it shuts off and you start the car, and then obviously it stays running and you got 12 volt going to it continuously and everything is good. Now we had to tie it in with the ECS booster pump because we're running a booster pump on it. So it made it real easy for us to tie in because we just tied everything in with that whole ordeal. Uh, obviously, if you got an ECS booster pump, make sure if you tie into it that you tie into the side the side that's supplying voltage from the factory fuse or from the factory uh, relay box area. Because if you go to the orange wire off of ECS, whenever that thing goes full tilt and the hob switch sees whatever pounds, it's going to go 18 volts. It's going to fry the PLX. So don't make that mistake if you're going to tie it in with the PLX. But other than that, guys. Everything's working great. I hope this helps you out. Peace. See you later.